our new District 2 Hollywood City Commissioner and a fourth generation Liberia resident and also Hollywood's first black city commissioner. Linda will discuss her experiences growing up in Liberia and her plans for issues facing our city to improve neighborhoods and educational opportunities for children and residents. I'm so happy she's agreed to join us. And Linda, you're up. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to thank the historical Society for this invitation and everybody online today. This is a very important day. I also like to thank my tech department, that's Kay Blake and Zaya Anderson, and my artist, they call him Blinky, but his name is Shalom Wright. Thank you and stand by. I'm going to start a video and then I'm going to come right back to you. I hope 
I hope you enjoyed that video. As I said, my name is Linda Hill Anderson. I was born Linda Marie Hill on July 7th, 1952 in Liberia, Florida. No, I take that back. It was Dania, Florida, because it was right across the street from Liberia. We lived there for almost a year until my brother was born, Johnny Hill Jr. After my brother's birth, we moved to Junction City, Kansas. We lived in Junction City, Kansas for two years. Then we moved back and lived with my grandmother, that's Lula Mae Hill. We lived there for about two or three months and we moved into what is now called Collins Apartment. We lived on 2339 McCullen Street. My father became the foreman of Collins Apartment. Then he later and left and worked for the city of Hollywood. He was a crane operator for the city. My mother worked for Broward County School Board, but before then she worked for Pumpernet, who was owned by Mr. Hatch. I had a great background and I loved the Liberian community. As you see, I had grandparents that lived on the same street that we lived on. My great grandmother, there was not a picture of her. Her name was Susie Black. And she had a house right at 2208 Hope Street, which is, was Hood Street. My mother, grandmother lived next door. And I had an aunt, Catherine Lockins, and an uncle, of Mr. Well, we call him uncle. <laughs> and my, my grandfather, my step-grandfather was, we call him Uncle John. And we had a great time. Going to school, I went to school from first to second grade at Attics High School at that time. Later on, when I was in the third grade, I went to Bethune Elementary, third through fifth grade. And I love Bethune. One thing that was good about Bethune was that we had really nice activities that they don't, the kids don't have today. We had the Maypole. It was called May Day. We would dress up in our beautiful dresses because it was right after Easter. We dress up and have my nice shoes on. We practiced for two weeks how to braid the Maypole. So we went there from th third to fifth grade and I loved uh, Bethune. The teachers followed us from third grade until we graduated from high school. I went to Collins Elementary in sixth grade. And what was interesting about Collins Elementary, we had a first, first time catching a bus. My parents paid 25 cent, and this is dating me, 25 cent to pay for someone to pick us up on the bus. His name was Mr. Shine. Mr. Shine didn't pick us up but three days a week, maybe two, I'll give or take. And the rest of the time we would have to walk. Now I live close to Sheridan Street and Collins Elementary is almost to Griffin Road. So we would walk. Sterling Road was a golf course. It was a golf, golf course located on Sterling Road. So in order for us to get to Collins Elementary, we would have to cross a, that golf course. So we had to dodge golf balls because they would hit us if they saw us crossing in, across the golf course. So there was a little lake that we had to cross. So a board was always hidden in the trees. We would pull that board out and run across that board to get to Collins Elementary, push it back so we would have it when we come back in the afternoon. We left from Collins Elementary and we went to Attics in sixth grade. So I had, oh, I was so excited to be back at Attics. My parents graduated from Attics High School. My cousins, all of my family graduated from Attics. So I was looking forward to going to Attics. You know, Attics was located in Liberia. Happy, happy, happy. Then all of a sudden I got this horrible blow that I was not going to graduate from Attics. That the class of 1968 
was going to be the last class. Oh, I felt horrible. So I went on my way enjoying the last days at Attics. Then we were transported to the school, which is Hollywood Hills now, but it was called Sterling High School. Went on to Sterling High School. We, the first day the bus drove through, through the airport, we got egged. That was the last time we had the windows down on the bus. And I can remember my bus driver, she was so sweet. Her name was Charlotte Hardred. And she helped wipe us down, get us all clean because we were gonna smell bad all day with eggs all over us. And the school bathroom was not up to par. The school wasn't up par. So we thought, why would they take us from our beautiful school and take us over to the barracks? That's what we call the barracks. So during that time, everybody know what time it was. We could not go to the bathroom by ourselves. So we would time it. We would time the different times that we would go to the bathroom. Three people at a time. If we didn't, we would get beat up. My brother lost his teeth during that time. My mom had to purchase new teeth for him. We stayed there in the barracks. Then we went to the brand new Hollywood Hills which we voted upon changing the name and the name was Hollywood Hills and we came with the colors aqua, orange and white. Uh, Hollywood Hills was interesting. That was a time of separation, division, but we worked hard, the kids, the students from Liberia and Dania to stay together. We caught the bus together to strategize on the bus, what we were gonna do. And it was nice when we came home from the bus, we get off the bus because we had a driver that really cared for us. And it was very interesting. We came back to Liberia and when we come back, we had to stay in the house. There until our parents came home, did our homework and we played in the streets. We did a lot of playing in the streets. We knew everybody on each street. On my street, there were large families like the Warner family, the Gilbert family, the Kemp family, the Mitchell family, uh, the Jones family. And my, fam my street was full of family. Like I said before, my grandmother lived next door. My great grandmother lived down further. And Catherine Lockett, which was my aunt, she lived a couple of streets down. The street wasn't completely paved. It ended in with the rock. It was a rock road, which is now called Oakwood um, Manor. It's where uh, the Oakwood houses are located. So we continued at Hollywood Hills. I didn't have to stay at Hollywood Hills that long because I had dual enrollment. I went to cosmetology school and the bus always missed me. So I had to walk from Hollywood Hills over to Sheridan Vocational. But I had a lot of fun at Sheridan Vocation. I became um, the right first runner up for Miss Vicka and Debbie Cox was Miss Vicka. And the, for those that don't know what Vicka stands for, it stands for Vocation Industrial Community Activities. But I love going to cosmetology. I left from cosmetology and went back over to Hollywood Hills to catch the bus back home. In our community, everybody, parents work hard. Everyone in our community mostly lived in houses. If they didn't, they lived in an apartment, but we loved each other. Uh, in my 11th grade year, I received a car, so I didn't have to catch the bus anymore, but I took a lot of my friends with me to school. I enjoyed Hollywood Hills at some points. At some points I did not enjoy Hollywood Hills. I enjoyed my community and being at Addicts because at Addicts, we had a football team. We had an awesome cheerleading department, uh, the cheerleaders, and we didn't have that at Hollywood Hills. But then after a year, we got a cheerleaders, we got a football team, we got a basketball team, which was nothing like addicts. See, my father 
was one of the number one players at Addicts High School. He played basketball and he played football. So he was very athletic. But let me talk about myself a little bit. I was always motivated, a little shy, a little bashful, and I have a lot of people to thank for that. They brought me out of that. My grandmother, Henry Graham, Lucille Johnson, Annie Thomas, and Raymond Thomas started the Liberia Civic Association. And my grandmother asked me, why don't you come and be a part of the association? I said, Grandma, I got too much to do. So I did, and I became the secretary. I was there a couple of years, then I left because I got married and I had my two beautiful children, Brian and Lakeisha Anderson. And I left from there and I decided, oh, I got to devote some time with my, my kids. Then I saw that the older people kept saying, we need somebody young, which I just was saying a few years ago, we need younger people to come out and be a part of the community. So I joined, I became the secretary, the chaplain, vice president for a number of years. Um, we had a lot of people to um, be president because I didn't want to take the job. Uh, Henry Graham, uh, Mr. Williams, and Mr. Robinson, Ms. McIntyre were our, our presidents. So I took over and I think I was a president for over 20 years because I couldn't get anybody to take my place. I was also a part of the neighborhood watch with the police department, Martin Luther King advisory board and numerous different boards. But the, the Library Civic Association challenged me. It made me work hard for my community because my, my grandmother paved the way for me. She showed me how important working in the neighborhood was. My mother had a program that was called the Willing Workers. And these ladies, they raised money so they could pay rent, buy food and clothing for children in the neighborhood. So you see, I come from a background of people giving back. My father had a barbershop that he ran on the corner of Ely Boulevard and Hope Street. So if you couldn't pay him to get your hair cut, he would just cut your hair. That's why I became a cosmetologist. So you couldn't, if you didn't have the money, I did a lot of heads free and said, head, I'm sorry. I had to do a lot of hair free of charge. So I've been very active. I love the city. I love the city of Hollywood. I lived in Dania for a, um, maybe a year at Fort Lauderdale, maybe a year. But Hollywood always had my heart. Uh, I bought this house in 1976. Um, and my, my house was bought from my cousin. Everything was passed down. So that's why I am a fourth generation of a home, house homeowner. My uncle lives across the street and my uncle is 104 years old. And we have long legit, we have long life. In our, in our family. My mother is 85 years old and she's still living. But I have to tell you that some of the old people that lived here are still living here now. Their children are still here. The Hepburn family, they're still here. The Ash family, they are still here. The Gardner, the Warners, the Kemp's, they are still here in this neighborhood. They never moved out. Some people on the outside feel like Liberia is a bad place to live. But as you look around, everybody is trying to buy property in Liberia. So I would say, don't ever count us out. I ran for commissioner because I love the whole city of Hollywood. District two also incumbents a lot of, of my family. I have a lot of family. My sister-in-law and family lives in District 2. So as I said, as a child, I wrote a letter in the Hollywood Sun Tatler 
about our community and the city of Hollywood. I talked about how we didn't get our garbage picked up. And as a lot of you know, that that's still happening. We don't get our garbage picked up. Um, and I talked about how the streets are not clean. But yeah, on yesterday, I did a street cleanup and we had over a hundred people to come into Liberia to clean up. So I'm gonna always work as the commissioner of Hollywood. Also, I was part of the name changing in Hollywood, changing Hope's Hood Street to Hope Street, changing Forest Street to Freedom Street and Lee Street into Liberty. And I wanna thank, I wanna do special thanks to um, Israel, Benjamin Israel, who passed two years ago. He worked 13 years to make this possible and Lori Schechter, who was right behind us, and Black Lives Matter. We had a lot of people that focused and worked hard to make the change. And as your new commissioner, I'm gonna turn it over to my two tech people, and they're gonna ask me some questions. So, cause I don't wanna just do all the talking. I wanna make it interesting to you. So. The first interview on, on my panelists, I'm gonna introduce Kate Blake, and then I'm gonna introduce my granddaughter, Zaya Anderson. So you guys take it away. Hi everyone, we're gonna do it um, behind the scenes here. Yes. Linda, I think you did an awesome job of, of telling us the history of um, Liberia. So I'm gonna ask a fun question. Um, Think of your family trips. What has been your most favorite family trip? My favorite family trip um, was back to my mother's home. We went to um, Brooklyn, Georgia. We first stopped in Perry, Georgia to pick up my aunt, my grandmother's sister. And we went back home to where, where my mother was born. And what was the fun thing about it was when I walked into my grandmother's church, some of the same people were there. And I looked like my grandmother so much that this guy, this man walked up to me. He said, Minnie you have not changed one bit. And I said, I'm not Minnie Lee. That's my grandmother. And he said, your grandmother? I said, that's my grandmother. And on that trip, we got a little lost but we had my um, nephew, Josh, my son, Brian, uh, Lakeisha, my grandmother, my mother. We were all together and it was so much fun. So every time I would speed a little bit, my grandmother would bring out one of the old gospel hymns and start singing Jesus, J Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, I love to call your name. And that's what made it interesting. She kept us laughing. Even when we got pulled over by the police, <laughs> she kept calling on Jesus. And that's one thing, I have a religious background and I believe that it, if it wasn't for him, I would not be here right now. That's great. That's such um, an interesting story. So the next thing I'd like to ask you is, I like how you talked about a lot of um, what it took to get you where you are today. And it seemed like you had a lot of tough times, but from the song that you chose, there was always hope. You were always hopeful. But tell me what lifelong lesson have you learned from those tough times? One thing from the tough times that we had, I learned to keep my mouth shut for one thing. <laughs> And not um, every time someone brings something negative to me, not to respond. Just turn the other cheek. Because on our, when we would take family trips, I didn't say anything about this story. We took a family trip with my father um, going to Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, where my grandfather lived. And we ate up all the food. You know, during that time, we couldn't stop and buy food 
So my mother would fry up this chicken and we would have all this canned goods, all this food in the bag. My brothers and sisters, we ate all the food before we got out of Florida. So when we got to South Carolina, we had to buy some food. So my dad said, don't, don't eat that sandwich yet. So we opened up the sandwich. It was a nice fat roach in the sandwich. Okay, that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, thanks for sharing. It's, it's like going down memory lane. And um, when you talk about not um, reacting, but pausing and waiting to respond, I find that so true, even in the times we're in today. Sometimes we just need to pause and really listen to what people are saying. Yeah. So I'm going to pass it over to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello, I'm... Um, uh, grandmother. Hello people to the um, chat. Um, I'm my grandmother's granddaughter. Um, the first question I have to ask is kind of like a bit like a basic question, but an important one. How does it feel to be the first black woman as commissioner in Hollywood? Well, some, I keep saying I have to pinch myself because I can't believe it. But to be the first black woman, first, um, uh, and also we're going to dominate, <laughs> dominate the uh, the chambers because there is more women sitting on the uh, city commission now than ever. But to be the first black woman, I think about when I walk inside of the chamber and I always look up, I never saw anyone of color there. And I only have known two people inside of the chambers and that was Kamer, Chamber, I'm sorry. Cameron Benson and Jeanette Smith that I would see. So I always wanted to make a change. I always asked Henry Graham to run. And I sat back one day and I said, if I don't try it, I won't know if I can make it. So I prayed over it and I asked the Lord, is it my time? And I kept praying. And I woke up one morning and I said, it's time. It's time for me to make a change. And it happened. And I'm proud of me. I, I'm very proud of me. My mother didn't want me to run because she was afraid. She was thinking back to those Hollywood Hills days. But I did it. Oh, that's a great answer. I appreciate that answer. So other than being commissioner, and I know that's a proud thing you're very proud of and excited for, what was another monumental moment that happened in your life other than being commissioner? My children. <laughs> okay. Having my two beautiful children and having four grandchildren. The reason why I said that my grandmother only had one child that was my mother and it took her a long time to have children. And most of my um, aunts and uncles didn't have children, except for Uncle John. Uh, he had the most children, and that was my grandmother's brother. And my grandfather, my grandfather had about nine and 10 children. But coming from my grandmother's side, they didn't have a lot of children. So when I um, married Ernest, and um, it, we were married two years before the birth of Brian, and when Brian came, it seemed like we were going to have a hard time. But he came out eight pounds to, uh, to uh, the day after my um, our anniversary. So that was important to my children and my family is important to me. And another thing that was important was the street naming, changing the street names from the Confederate generals. So I, I, we have a question in the chat. It says, over the years, there was racial strife in South Florida. Did it affect the Liberia community? Yes, it did. Yeah. And the reason why it affected, um, I'm at, I'll tell you the story. I was thinking about this story the other day. My mother took us to, um, I, it was called Winn-Dixie. I'm not gonna tell you what it's called now. You just think. <laughs> it was called Quick check. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was called quick check. And we went to the store 
And behind the Coca-Cola soda machine was the two water fountains. One said colored and one said white. Now, I just saw somebody said on, on chat, Linda, you wasn't shy to us. Yes, I was, but I wasn't shy enough to take a chance and, and drink from the water, the white water fountain, which my hand almost got pulled off because I was at that fountain. The water was nice and cold. So yes, it was striped and it was a province in Liberia because we, it was a divi we were divided. Sheridan Street divides one side of the street. And I see it, let's go um, further to the chat. It says, thank you. Around what year was Liberia established? Well, Li Liberia was, um, Joseph Young established the uh, whole Hollywood in the in 20s. 20s, in 1920s. So uh, he, Hollywood, Liberia was established for the maids and people who did labor. They um, put us over here across from the railroad track. The railroad track divided us. And they put us here because they felt like we could farm the land and we can build on the land. And we had a lot of Bahamians that came over and they built houses. Most houses were, were built by the Bahamians because they had that, that skill. So another question, let's go back to what I'm asking Commissioner. What do you feel are the biggest needs for Liberia in the coming year? Our bigger, biggest needs are, first of all, we got the pandemic going on and we got to, um, we got to take shots. I'm asking everybody to make sure you take your shots. Um, I haven't taken mine yet, so nobody can say, well, you haven't taken yours, but I will take a shot. But the biggest need is housing. We need affordable housing for everyone. And I want that. $1,800 to $2,200 a month is not affordable. So that's what we need. So that um, person also asked, that's from Susan Max. Um, what improvements or changes would you like to see at Bethune Elementary? Oh, Bethune, as you all know, I uh, attend Bethune. And tomorrow I will be with Bethune Elementary students also giving uh, a few words. The changes I like to see with Bethune modernized. Um, it's a shame that they still have jobless wind windows. I would like to see it upgraded and look like there are other schools in the other neighborhoods. And Susan Matt says she's been um, helping to promote a United Way reading program started there without um, enough funding from the city. So that's our concern she's bringing. So we, we need to work on bringing more money into the Bethune. And, and in, we're in an LMI neighborhood, low to moderate income neighborhoods. And you find that fundings are low in those neighborhoods. And that's why it's important as parents to stay focused on your children's learning and their homework and make sure you know their teachers, their principals, go out to school. I know it's COVID, but you have the web and they can, and you can get on there and talk with them. Um, so this question is also about, you mentioned um, affordable housing. The question is, are you worried about gentrification affecting this area yes. and making it unaffordable? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I look at it every day um, where houses are coming in. Um, it's, it's, our neighborhood has changed. I do know my neighbors because I'm, because by coming commissioner or before coming commissioner, I walk the streets and talk to my neighbors and the community. I'll give you some comments. Um, what a joy to hear Commissioner Anderson's recollections of her family and community in our Hollywood. And let's see. Well, I thank the Historical Society for inviting me and asking me to be the speaker for today. I was nervous and still nervous, but that's when we were in the age now of the web, and we're not in front of people. We are on a camera 
and I can't get up and walk around and talk. I can't move my hands around like I usually do. But I thank you all for <laughs> thinking about me. And it's important that people, you know, it's important that people know the history. And don't be afraid to come into District 2. It's a great district, a very diverse group of people. And I just, I love them. Um, our commission, I got to meet everyone on the commission board and we have great commissioner. Our mayor is an awesome mayor, Josh Levy. Um, our former commissioner, uh, Bean Fur, and also Peter Bober, Peter Bober, our former mayor also. And I give a shout out also for Peter Hernandez because he was also a commissioner in District 2. So I'll follow that up with a question from Gail Cohen. What improvements do you want to see in District 2? I want to see the, I want to see a cleaner neighborhood. I want our neighborhood to look like other neighborhoods. When you ride down the street, I don't want you to say, oh, we're in District 2. Oh, we're in Liberia. I want money funds going toward our district. I don't want it just going to, I mean, I look at our streets. Um, we, we got a long ways to go. We are all, you are taxpayers and I am a taxpayer. So I wanna see improvement in these areas. So here's a follow up to that, the Friends of Sterling Road. What role can our library play in the lives of the people living in Liberia? Do people need mobile Wi-Fi, for instance? Yes. I saw a lot of great, I saw a lot of grandparents going to get Wi-Fi for their kids, especially when we had to, um, they, the school went on, the school went on uh, e-learning, e e yeah, e-learning, uh, e a lot of grandparents because some parents couldn't afford it. And you have to think like right now, a lot of parents have lost their jobs and they can't afford to pay for Wi-Fi. So yes, Very important. yes. And I, I know a lot of parents say they miss the library being open. I think some libraries are open. I know downtown Hollywood library is open. Linda, the Sterling Road Library is, is open, but um, I'd love to follow up with you afterwards to see how the friends could perhaps, you know, purchase mobile Wi-Fi that people could take out of the library. So it's something I'd really love to discuss with you at a future point. Okay. Thank you so much. So let's, um, let's um, take it back to a little bit of uh, history of Liberia. What would you say is your most um, memorable? I know you went through a lot of uh, memories. Which one or what um, made you in who you are as with the community that you lived in, this Liberia community? How did it impact who you are? Who was the... Like it, this, um, from Liberia, your experiences growing up in Liberia. Who was the person? How did it shape you? Um, I, I definitely have to say my parents and grandparents shaped me. Um, my family, you know, they were entrepreneurs and they tried to, um, I worked, I worked hard. And I, I, I told my granddaughter, my first job was at uh, Burger King and Henry Graham helped me to get that job. And I told Graham, I said, you're all gonna laugh. I'm tired of smelling like a whopper. When I walk out of Burger King, can I get another job? So he got me another job and I started to work at Sears and Roebuck. So I would say, Mr. Graham, I'm hearing Graham is a person in the community that has always worked to make this community a better place. So he worked really close with my grandmother and he, he is a pioneer and he's still working. I ask him all the time when he's gonna retire. Linda, one of the questions that was asked earlier that um, uh, we'd love to hear from you about is um, there were stories of famous musicians who played in the great clubs of Miami, but they weren't allowed to stay in the hotels where they played because of their race. So right. after the shows, uh, many of them would come to Liberia. Right. Did you ever meet anyone or did you ever hear of anyone famous coming to Liberia? Yes. yes. I, met, I, met J I met James Brown. <laughs> James Brown, uh, his family is the Evans family, 
and they lived on the corner of Riley Street. So I met him. I also met um, some of the Temptations. I met B.B. Um, King, Bobby Blue Bland, and uh, so, so many I can't even think. But no, they had to live with family because they couldn't live in the hotels. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because when they came down, they were singing and playing. We'd be on the corner. Uh, listening to the music and when you get a chance to touch James Brown <laughs> that was really really interesting I'm and it was a lot more <laughs> you get chills <laughs> and it was a lot of more entertainers uh, that came um, even um, some of they, they like I said they had a lot of family here too questions so tell us about who is Henry Graham Henry Graham was like a brother to me. My father cut his hair all the time. Henry Graham, uh, father, grandfather was um, what, uh, Reverend, Graham, uh, Reverend Wright, Reverend H. W. Wright, Henry Wright. And he was our crossing guard at Attics also. He was my pastor at New Hope Baptist Church. We started out at New Jerusalem and Pastor Wright decided he wanted to start his church, and we left from New Jerusalem and went with him, and our church started right across the street, which is now called the Box Field. Our church was located there with the teen center. We were inside, which was the teen center, which is the recreation center, which is now the MLK Center, located on 2400 and Charleston Street. Now, when you talk about um, Henry Wright, and, and New Hope. I was a member of New Hope for over 60 years, and now I am a member of the New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, unusual under the leadership of Pastor Micah Anderson. Oh, thank you for sharing that. So I'm um, seeing we, um, Zed, do you have any other questions? Oh, yeah. I had uh, one more question for you. Since you talked about, you know, people that have shaped you to come here today, your mother and, you know, your grandmother and Henry Graham. Other than that, like, who else would you say has been an inspiration for you? Not really shaped you, but it could be a celebrity. It could be a family member. It could just be anybody who has, like, inspired you today. Um, I could say Kate Blake. <laughs> 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 because... As you all know, I worked for Broward County Schools for 42 years, and I was a little shy. And she told me, she said, you got to get some computer skills. Uh, she's, I went back to school. I went to public speaking. I hope it's working. Um, she pushed me. She motivated me. She helped me. So I give that to her. And I had, it's a lot of people, a lot of people that really worked with me, but she really, really I can say, as I moved up the ranks at Broward County School Board, and if it wasn't for her, when I talk about the years in life that I worked there and I put in application, I tell people, don't stop putting in application. Do not get discouraged. And she, she taught me not to get discouraged, to keep pushing on. And when I left there, I was staff developer and a hiring manager. I, ha I wore three hot hats. She, I'm, I'm a workaholic, guys. So anybody that knows me, I do at least three jobs. Okay. That's great. Well, thank you so much. As Kay Blake, I'm really appreciative <laughs> of the support. And I, it's been a journey. And I'm glad to be a part of this because of you. I feel like I'm part of the Liberia community <laughs> because of the years we've worked together. So I will say that kudos to you for always thinking of your community, even when you're at work, you're <laughs> thinking of how can I make it better? How, what can I bring to the civic association? You know, um, this letter I need to write to the city and even running um, I think your experience in the Liberia community really solidified and like the song that you played earlier, just in the hope for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. 
Yes. I got my wings. I got my wings at um at Broad County School Board. And that taught me how to deal with all different types of people. That's why I can turn the other cheek. <laughs> but, uh, there's also a question, uh, I, excuse me, Commissioner Anderson. There's also um, a question um, from Lynn Smith. Can you tell us why you are so connected to historical preservation? You must be excited that the city has agreed to identify the historical homes and buildings in Hollywood at the last commission meeting. So that's something that you've been involved with? No, uh, I just always, because my family um, property is here and it's historical because it was passed down. Uh, we didn't sell our property. We kept our property and passed it on into the family. Only property was sold was my great grandmother property because she gave, she really gave the property to a very close friend that needed a house and all her children and grandchildren had houses. She gave the house to her and um, the person mortgaged the house and lost the house. So that's the only house that we don't own anymore. So I have, like I said, we have, um, and I have an aunt, we have two properties on, on the street that I live on. We, we have three properties. And my godmother also lived on the same street that I live on. So I came from strong women. I was always surrounded by strong windows, win, women that encouraged me to be a better woman. So that's why I think that's why I think I am where I am now. I can't take it from my dad. My dad was a very strong man. He he worked two jobs, and he went to Hollywood. When he went to Hollywood, that there were in that many blacks working there. Uh, he was the first crane operator for the city of Hollywood. So. Commissioner Anderson, there's also a question about um, how we can work with the school board in developing any kind of curriculum uh, regarding local history that, you know, from your talk today, there's so much that most of us never knew and are just so interested in now. And it's a shame that we're not getting that lesson over to middle school or high school students. Is there anything that the community can do? Well, one thing, when they came out, um, when they were trying to close addicts, if the parents and people that love addicts in Bethune will just stay on the backs of the the super, uh, superintendent and the school board for the history. But because the history should be in the history book, I went down to um, the Historical Society and I purchased um, the book, the book from the historic part. And it has a little bit of um, this book. <laughs> and it has a little bit about library in this book. And I think more people should go down there and purchase this book because it has a um, uh, little of the history of Liberia. And we have a lot of history. Uh, someone told me I need to write a book. It's too, I mean, maybe one day. I'm, I'm, I'm a little senior now, but <laughs> maybe one day I will uh, write a book because it is so much uh, about Liberia and District 2. I have to keep saying District 2 because I am the commissioner for District 2, but I lived in Liberia for over 60 years. But we have to get this. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Anderson, what was the name of the book? Race and Change in Hollywood, Florida by Kitty Oliver. I bought it from the Historic uh, Department, Historical Society. And that book is um, a very good book to read and to see who all the people that was working for Hollywood. Do you have a question? Robin Dullard, Dullard would like to know, what is the best thing about living in Liberia today? The best thing living in Liberia today is that I still have some of my classmates that live in Liberia. Uh, like I said, the Hepburns and, uh, and the Warners. So that's the best thing about living, living in Liberia. And since um, 
if I walk down the street, most people know my name even before coming commissioner because being the president of Liberia Civic Association, I was always at the door to encourage people to come to the meetings. Felicia, Felicia says something. Oh, so um, we're also on Facebook living, so we're, we're getting a lot of uh, comments. <laughs> Oh. Commissioner Anderson, yeah. um, are there any efforts underway to do anything about voter registration in Liberia? Is that, um, you know, are, are there any organized efforts at this point? Yes, we have uh, groups that are working. Um, I know Lori is, she's working all over, but we have, um, I, we have a young guy named uh, Aaron Hollis, and we have a um, uh, Mona, Mona Lisa, they work to get the voters out. Um, they work real hard in the neighborhood. They even just put a, a garden in the neighborhood. So there, there are some young people that are working, are motivating, motivated to work and improve Liberia. I, I know that we didn't get to all, to all of the questions. So if you still have a question and we didn't get to it, just unmute yourself and then ask your question, please. So maybe we did get to all the questions, Commissioner Anderson. That's pretty remarkable. We get to all the questions. Well, no one is raising any right now. And there were a lot of questions. So you covered a huge amount of material today. Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I, I wanna end it um, just the way I started it. Um, but I'm gonna read the words so you understand my feelings about it. I was trying to learn the words, but I didn't get it good. <laughs> There's a time for every soul to fly. It is in the eyes of every child. It's the hope, the love that saves the world and we should never let it go. I can see in the stars across the sky, dream a hundred thousand dreams before. Now I finally realize, you see, I waited all my life for this moment to arrive. And finally, if I reach deep within my heart, overcome all obstacles, won't let this dream fall apart. See, I strive to be the very best, shine my light for all to see, because anything is possible when you believe. Love keeps lifting me higher. I can see in the stars across the sky, dreams a hundred thousand dreams before. Now I finally realize, you see, I waited all my life for this moment to arrive. And finally, I believe. This, the stories are important and not to be glamorized, but memorize. Through the struggles, there was always hope. If I would have lost my hope, then I would not have become the commissioner of District 2. Pay attention and remain hopeful. The struggles through the 60s are the same as today, but hidden better. Plant a seed. Thank you. Back to you all. Thank you very much, Linda. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, um, that was a beautiful presentation. I really appreciate it from the Historical Society. We do sell Kitty Oliver's book. It's on our webpage, Hollywood Historical Society. And we also have some at the um, Research Center. <clears throat> um, Hannah, did you have any more to say? I just wanted to say that our next lecture coming up is uh, March the 21st. It's Isabel Weiss from the Women's Club. She's going to tell the history of the Women's Club, which has been around for a long time. They're doing some renovations, and uh, she'll tell you all about that. But Karen, she, I did, oh, sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. If you would like to read Commissioner Anderson's original letter 
to the Sun Tatler. Um, all of past editions of the Sun Tatler are now available on the web thanks to uh, Calvin Watson, the, the past director of Broward County Libraries and to his staff. So you can now get any um, issue that you'd like and uh, you can just go to the website for uh, Broward County Library and you can find those issues there. So Commissioner Anderson, we're all gonna look for that letter and see if we can find it from a few years ago. So, um, okay. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. We've learned a great deal and um, we'll see you next month, everybody. Thanks so much for attending. Thank Bye. you. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Thank you, Linda. Bye -bye. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you. Thank you.